Hello, I'm Stuart Bloor, and if you follow my angling journal on a regular basis and have done so for a number of years, you will be aware that during the spring I fish a gravel pit and have a couple of months on their max for tench. And that's pretty much been the sum of my tench fishing over the last few years. But if you do read it on a regular basis and have done so recently, you'll be aware that I fished a particular venue for uh, carp and perch. And in the process, I've caught some decent tench. Hence, I've decided to have a few sessions, see how it goes, actually targeting the tench themselves. My first one, as you can see, I'm uh, spread out on the bank. I've got the rods out, it's still, still quite light. So I'm hoping that uh, I'll get amongst the fish as it gets sort of into dusk and of course during the night. Let's see how it goes. shelter now I've just ventured out to strike into a fish I must admit I thought it was a carp I thought how ironic is this that the times I've been after carp and perch I've caught tench and here I am after tench and I've caught a carp as it was it was a it was a tench it, it really did give me the run around it was definitely a, a fish that right until the end I thought was a was a carp but it was a tench so of course I'm really really pleased with that got that fish under my belt as it were always better than a blank isn't it now of course I'm waiting for the next one early hours of the morning I'm about to net the fish. That's a cracker, eh? Definitely worth getting out of bed for, even if it's only a bed chair by the side of a lake. We had a lovely sunset last night, and this is what it's like just a few hours later. You can just about make out the other side of the lake. Only just though. Just had a second fish. And I'm about to return it now. So let's watch it go off. See it there? <laughs> Through the shallows and into the deeper water. Powered off there, didn't it? Was brilliant the sort of fishing I do one is a result and when I get two well that's a bonus and as I've just tweeted I've just returned a nice big fat bonus the mist is starting to lift now the Sun will be up soon well I think it's up already but can't see it at the moment it'll burn the mist away and we had a glorious day yesterday it'll be a glorious day today in between was uh, not so good but for most people of course they had been asleep during that time so they haven't been out as I have and experienced the best of the weather but also the worst as well they may be my only fish of the session who knows still a couple of hours to go before I pack away but the fish that I've caught, I've caught on giant corn-shaped boilies. And so this is an appropriate time to introduce my guest for the week, Des Taylor, talking about giant corn-shaped boilies. Over the last couple of years, we've sold literally thousands of, of these little things. They're called the corn poppers and corn sinkers. 
the cone shaped boilers uh, in an incredible edge to catch uh, big fish as well as tench, uh, bream, uh, but you know lots of big carp have been caught on this putting two together like like so but we've been asked ever since we bought them out can we have some bigger ones especially for big carp and especially for carp abroad but I've tried these and you're going to catch a lot of fish in England and what we've done is we've bought out what we call the maize size one so instead of that size let's just open it up you've got these monster size ones and you can imagine how good that looks in two or three as a bait stack just off the bottom with just a just a hook look at that two three or one and I mean you can even chop them about you know you can chop them to your own size because these are pop-ups or sinkers so you can sort of break it and you can make it you know two sizes like that all different combinations a different shaped bait to catch those weary fish a great idea session comes to an end and the video also comes to an end just going to show you now my my rig well one of them I've been fishing two uh, different things um, during this session there's the the lead it's a couple of ounces you can see there I've created a bolt rig just with a, a couple of beads and a power gum knot which very easily just just comes away in the event of a, of a snag my main line coming down you can see there back lead I like to keep everything pinned to the to the surface or to the bed should I say of the lake and there's my my braided hook length it's about about six inches and there's the the business end I'll write in a little bit more detail in the article about the rig why I use it and why I go for it and all that sort of stuff um, and also I'll, I'll tell you what the you know the actual line is that I use and the and the braid and the hook and all that sort of thing so so check out the article and I'll see you next week.